Hello Future Dentists, this is Brandon Everett here. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I had a request to run through the PAT angle ranking uh, questions again, but this time focusing on obtuse angles. And so uh, I'm going to kind of run through the process again from the previous video as well as uh, offer another suggestion or strategy that might be helpful when determining which angle is smaller or larger. And the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, if you are not familiar with my personal process of how to tackle these questions, go on back to my previous video and check that out and then come on back here if you're interested in learning more about obtuse angles. But if you're here for learning about the process and the procedures for the PAT angle ranking section, head on over to my previous video. Now let's get into this question here. So just like the previous video, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the answers because remember, we're going to use the answers to guide our decision making. So again, let's take a look. The smallest two angles could either be two or four and the largest angle can either be one or three. So this is where we're going to need to uh, differentiate the smaller angles, the larger angles, which will, once we do that, will lead us to the correct answer. So let's look at two and four here. I'm going to kind of zoom in and we're going to flick our eyes back and forth. And yet again, make sure we're focusing on just this area here because the angle legs or the angle sides are not always equal, which can throw off your decision making process if you are focusing on how long they are. So this is why it's important to focus in on the, I would say the apex of the angle. So flicking my eyes back and forth here, um, to me, it looks like, I'm going to zoom out and zoom back in, angle four is a little bit smaller. I'm seeing a little bit more black, uh, if you remember that little strategy from the previous video. Now, another way that we can kind of go about determining these angles, I'm going to zoom in on angle two here. Um, you won't be able to do this on the actual test, but this is something that you can start doing that will help you understand um, and help your mind kind of visualize these angles and help you down the road um, to determine which angle is large or smaller in your head. So what you can do when you have a, a pen and paper or iPad or whatever is you can make this angle into an obtuse angle, or excuse me, you can split this obtuse angle into a right angle and an acute angle. So now what we're really looking at is this angle here. And we can compare this angle to this angle here. If we do the same thing here and make this a right angle. You have to be careful too because you can't, you got to keep in mind that this bottom leg here, I'm talking about this one and this one, they might not always be at the same angle. So you can't compare them directly if, if that makes sense. Same with like when we come to one and three, how one is sloped down and three is sloped upward. You just have to keep that in mind when you're comparing these angles against each other. But let's go back to this angle here, angle four. I'm just going to draw this angle. Now we can look at this way. And if we flick our eyes back and forth, we can obviously see that four is the smallest angle. So I'm gonna write here. Four is our smallest angle. All right, now we need to move on to angle one and three and determine which one is the largest angle and then we will have our correct answer. So I'm gonna get rid of this and start fresh on one and three. So again, I'm gonna make sure I draw kind of our focus zone here. We're gonna focus here and we're gonna focus here. Okay, so looking back and forth immediately, angle three jumps out as being the larger angle. To me, it looks more straight at the apex of the angle as opposed to being more um, angle-like or rigid, I would say. Um, usually when you're comparing these obtuse angles, and they can get almost to 180 degrees, you can either compare them to 90 degree angles or you can compare them to 180 degree angles. And sometimes these angles, um, the flatter they look, the larger they are, obviously. So you can compare them. Keep that in mind when you're going through and looking at these angles. So let's go through and let's do this 90 degree angle again here, um, just so we can compare. 
these two and just double check that um, number three is our largest angle. So we're going to come here, zoom in. And again, remember, we have to watch this bottom leg. Remember, this is angled up compared to the other angles. So we have to keep that in mind. Like 90 degrees seems right about there. OK, so let's kind of zoom out and let's look at look at what we came up with here. And it might be kind of difficult to see. I'm flicking my eyes back and forth. And uh, 3 is bigger. Three, oh, there we go. Three is the largest angle. Uh, so based on what we determined, B and C are crossed out, and our correct answer in this case is A. That's our correct answer, four being the smallest and three being the largest angle. And I don't know if the 90, de the 90 degree strategy worked as well with angle one and three. To me, it's a lot easier to look at them like this. To me, three seems like the larger angle because um, it's more curved right here if you're looking at it. Um, it doesn't seem as like two straight lines are coming together. It seems more curved. And generally, kind of like the white versus black in the last video, we can kind of compare how rigid those two lines come together or how curved they look. And generally, the more curved this area looks, uh, the larger the angle. So those are just some tips. Hopefully that's helpful and that kind of gives you something to... Wow, my Siri just went off. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so what I was saying is hopefully that gives you some sort of start or additional strategy strategy that you weren't using before or something else to think about when you're attacking the obtuse angles specifically, I know I think the obtuse angles are a bit harder. Um, they can be easier if they're more, if they're closer to 180 degrees or they are closer to 90 degrees. Um, but I think right in this in-between stage, like this question we saw today, this is kind of the more difficult questions. But if you compare them to 90 degree angles, like I said, and you kind of look for the curving, um, curving line when the two lines meet, um, use those two strategies that will really help you in addition to using the procedure that I outlined in this video and my previous video. I think that'll help um, and hopefully answer your question about obtuse angles. So if this was helpful, if you want me to do even more PAT angle ranking or you want me to focus on uh, a different PAT section next time, please let me know. Send me an email, leave me a comment on this video. I would really appreciate that and I would make sure uh, I can come out with these videos in a timely manner so you don't have to wait too long. Uh, I don't want to delay your studying for the DAT. So thank you very much for, first of all, your, your suggestion and for being active and watching these videos. And thanks for tuning in and watching it. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.